guys, today we're gonna do a little bit of noodling around with some watercolor paper and some brand new Windsor & Newton colorless art masking fluid. I picked this up at Jerry's recently. Now in the past, I have used Schminky, I've used Fine Liner, and I've used Graphics, and I think all of them, uh, I just don't like using them. I know some people have better results than I do, and I've gotten loads of advice, all of which is conflicting. So um, I kind of feel like perhaps I am the common problem element here. So I'm gonna try a couple new things, I'm trying a new product, and I'm not going to leave it on for any longer than 12 hours. So I'm gonna start by giving this a really good shake. It is colorless masking fluid, but there was some like blackish to uh, dark gray sediment at the bottom. I'll zoom out a little bit. Now masking fluid is a latex based product, and I want to try doing something a little different than my norm. Uh, in how I use the product. So I was inspired by a woman who does these beautiful silk illustrations. So I am trying, and this might be a terrible idea, I am trying some masking fluid in an eyedropper. And perhaps the thickness of line is a bad idea. We'll find out together. But I'm trying to draw with it. This is actually some of the most watery masking frisket I've ever encountered. Uh, maybe I should switch over, in fact. You know what, this method, not working. Going to scratch this. And going to go clean out my eyedropper. I'll be right back. So I'm going to go ahead and allow that to dry. And we'll just use that for a different test and hopefully it will not, this watery, watery, look at that. I've never seen a masking fluid so watery, but okay, cool. Um, we'll use a smaller size pad of the same. This is a cellulose-based um, watercolor paper. I've had better results with that. And I've heard that A, use a synthetic brush, and B, use a synthetic brush that has been uh, thoroughly coated in soap. So here's our synthetic. It's a Utrecht Red Sable Blend, but I'm pretty sure it is entirely synthetic. I've been pretty abusive to this brush. And we'll use some old masters worked into the bristles to help protect them. Not that this is a great brush, but I don't really have any throwaway brushes anymore. And we'll go ahead and begin anew. And I'm doing something I don't normally do. I'm freehanding a design. You guys know I usually like to begin with something pre-sketched. I'm kind of having a hard time getting the design I had in mind. And I apologize because this is uncolored masking fluid so you guys can't see what I'm doing. But it'll make it like magic when we start applying color, right? Alright, so I'm going to let that dry. Now, here is where we come to some of that conflicting advice. I've been told to allow it to dry for 24 hours, which <laughs> conflicts with the advice of don't let it sit on the paper for more than 12 hours in its entirety. So um, that's going to be an interesting one. I think I will set a timer for an hour and check back in then. I went ahead and I rinsed this off and I'm gonna use the Old Master Soap to fully clean it over in the sink. All right guys, so in our next step, I thought it would be a great opportunity to demonstrate just how vibrant some of Core's watercolors are. I don't always get to use them as much as I'd like, but I do have a fairly large selection of them and they do have some brilliant, beautiful colors. So I thought this would be a great opportunity. So we're gonna start with Permanent Gamboge, which is sort of a golden yellow color. And I'm gonna just work kind of thick and cheap. And I'll use my craft mat to help facilitate this. So I've got a sample here, and I'm just going to 
fill in this area here with gamboge yellow. Even add some a little more thickly mixed so we get a more saturated color. And to give that a chance to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and move over to a non-adjacent square with transparent pyrrole orange. Do the same thing with this. Of course, this is a great way to get your hands super dirty. Trying to find a small ish square. So that's a fairly lightly mixed glaze. Let's get some more color in there. All right, next we're gonna try for quinacridone magenta. doesn't take much paint with the core watercolors either to get a really nice saturated color. It's part of the reason I don't use them so much is that I do a lot of Kara stuff which tends to rely on muted subdued colors and core colors at least the ones I tend to pick up are very very vibrant. And now we'll do a cobalt teal. And something like this would be a great watercolor project if you want to sort of familiar, familiarize yourself with how watercolors handle, but you don't necessarily have a lot of drawing ability yet. Very simple, but gratifying sort of exercise to do. That really doesn't require too much in the way of materials. All right, so now we have no squares that are non-adjacent. So I'm going to step away for a little while and allow this to dry. All right, so these have had a chance to dry. I actually wanna go over my transparent pyrrole orange again, cause it's a little light for my taste. So I'm going to go ahead and mix a little more up here. That looks like it's gonna be a lot more, oh yeah, much, much more saturated, perfect. Because I really do want to showcase how brilliant these colors are. And there are plenty of, there are plenty of watercolor brands that make really brilliant watercolors, but Core are some of the most transparent watercolors as well. Although the cobalt teal is a little more opaque, but it's got this really nice granulation going on. And if you want to see photos of this up close to better judge, head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com because I'm going to be sharing photos as well as my thoughts on both the Windsor & Newton masking fluid that we used here today and on these core watercolors. Okay, so I have a brand new tube of French ultramarine blue. And one of the things that's supposed to make core really exciting as a watercolor option is that it doesn't contain any gum arabic. The binder they're using uh, doesn't have any sort of yellowing to it the way gum arabic does. So you're gonna get a more true blue. So if you're mixing like skies or say uh, virgins veils, that sort of thing where you want like a historically very pure blue, core it should be able to deliver that. So I have this French ultramarine here which is a little gummy. I just I just got it, like I said, so it had some of the salt um, binder had kind of risen to the top of the tube. So it's making 
the paint inside a little bit gummy. But hopefully, hopefully that won't be a real problem. All right, next is quinacridone crimson. And some of these, the little tubes were bought as a set of, I think, six colors. It was like they're brilliant colors, since at the time I didn't have anything even close to that brilliant. And then I've purchased tubes as time progressed. So this quinacridone crimson is a very, um, a very blue sort of red. It's a beautiful color, um, almost like fresh blood. Of course, I'm getting it all over my hands. Ah. So I want to wipe that. Oh, and I got the. All right, I need to go clean up. I'll be right back. All right, fresh, clean hands. I can proceed. So next, dioxazine purple which is one of the purples that was recommended way back when I was taking an acrylic painting class at UNO um, as being sort of a true purple, not too blue, not too red, and the sort of purple you wouldn't be able to mix, you wouldn't be able to achieve if you were just mixing colors. get it into the pink, but trying to get good coverage. Isn't that a beautiful purple? Of course, they're going to dry a little less brilliant, but that's just sort of one of the, the sad sacrifices with watercolor. And you lose some brilliance as you go. And I'm going to step away and let that dry. All right, guys, so that has had a chance to dry. Actually, I think I wanna go in next with quinacridone gold, which is one of my favorite. This and Indian yellow are some of my favorite colors to use because the color shift you get is just spectacular. There's really a lot of range. It's like a very, orangey gold. I will put that here. Actually, I want to water it down a little bit so I can get that color variation if possible. Lift some of it up so that it dries a little lighter and then go back Next, green gold, which I'm going to apply over here. It's another one of those colors that really shades beautifully. So I do want to lighten it up so we can get some of that color variation going on. Then we're actually going to go with a neutral burnt umber. And we're going to put it up here at that square at the top. This is another one that I bought and didn't really get a chance to use. Then we have one square left. And I actually have an indigo that is dark enough that it might feel more neutral. That's another one I haven't had a chance to use yet. I picked up a few of them in recent weeks, so I haven't really had a chance to play with them too much. So this is a good opportunity
and indigo is one of those colors that does have some shading to it. So. All right, so I think I wanna go back in with that French aquamarine. Add another layer to it. See how that goes. Sometimes with these granulating colors, they will get really muddy if you try to add another layer to them. So they're kind of best done in one layer. And this one seems like it might be similar to that. So I'll leave that alone. And I wanna go, maybe not, maybe I'll just leave the green gold alone. So, let's see, I'm gonna try and lay out the colors we just used. Give you guys an idea. And like I said, I've been taking photos as I go. So you can check this out on the blog. All right, so I know this looks dry. It is dry to the touch, but I'm going to allow this to fully dry for an hour before I try to remove the rubber cement with this rubber cement. I mean, shoot, the masking fluid with this rubber cement uh, pickup. So I'm gonna go ahead and start cleaning up my workspace and I'll see you guys in an hour. While we allow that to dry, here is that piece that I applied a little too thickly using um, an eyedropper pipette to try and apply our masking fluid. So I thought I would do a, I mean, why not see if we can pick it up easily when it's that thickly applied. And there seems to be absolutely no problem when it's that thickly applied. There is a little bit of staining actually. This is not colored, not dyed. Oh, and here we go. We have some ripping. Can I, there we, oh, see, this is the problem with rubber cement. And I know I applied it pretty thickly on here, but that was another piece of conflicting advice. Oh, apply it very thinly. Oh, just gob it on. The thicker it is, the less it's likely to tear. So even with the Windsor Newton, we have some ghosting. There is some surface, I can feel it on the surface. Let's try going over it with the pickup. No good, it's still on there. So this has discolored this paper, which is good to know. It will probably discolor the other paper we're using as well. So like I said, I will check in with you guys in a bit. All right guys, so it's been about an hour. It's time to remove the frisket. So we're using a rubber cement pickup and just using a gentle rubbing movement. You can use your fingertips if you don't have a rubber cement pickup to just get the rubber cement moving. And so far this much thinner application seems to be a lot less destructive than that heavy application. No. Start peeling it. Our paint is flaking off of the rubber cement just a little bit since we did have some overlap. But we were able to get a nice, really clean edge. not really getting the paper tearing problem that I was earlier. All right, looks like I was able to get most of it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this quick and fairly easy little video. I hope you guys will check out Core Watercolor Paints.
They have some really beautiful colors. And I hope you guys will consider subscribing for more watercolor tips, tricks, and tutorials. And remember, for more watercolors, head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com and check out my watercolor basic series. So I'm Becca Hilburn. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. Bye guys.